My name is John Charles, President of Cascade Policy Institute. I'm here today to talk about Resolution 15-05-24, Proposed Streetcar Operating Agreement. I am going to reference page two of it, this little chart, if you want to take a look at it. Uh, my question basically will be when you get to this agenda item is, is uh, kind of why are you doing it? Actually, why is TriMet even involved in the streetcar, <clears throat> aside from it's a legacy project? Uh, streetcar only has one car per train, so it's obviously not high capacity transit. It only comes three or four times an hour, so it's not high frequency transit. It only goes about five, six, seven, eight miles per hour, depending on where you are, so it's obviously not high speed transit. It barely qualifies as transit. If it was transit, you'd be running it all over the place. You're not. It's a City of Portland project for whatever reason. Uh, so when you look at the chart and the estimated uh, numbers for FY 16, 17, and 18, you can see that when you net out the meager amount of fares, the fare box recovery ratio is quite tiny, which means that the actual users voting with their dollars every day consider this service almost worthless. Well, if it's almost worthless, then why are we running it? Uh, which raises the, and, there's, and they're proposing to go to a $2 fare. Well, that's fine, but your fare is, is $2.50, and so why is the streetcar only $2? Um, the city says that the fare box recovery for the aerial tram, which is part of the transit system, is 100%. The users pay 100% of the operating cost. It's $4 to board. Um, I support that. I would like to see actual users pay most or all of the cost. So this raises all these kind of uh, questions about why you have, and, and for the broader purposes, from trying to, what is your goal for fare box recovery? I'm not, I've been coming here for a long time. I'm not aware that you have any internal institutional goal for what users should pay. And when you don't have a goal, that really affects your operating costs and especially your your labor negotiations because <clears throat> when your employees negotiate and they ask for a lot and they know that no matter what they ask for, it really has no direct connection to what you have to charge, uh, it puts pressure to go up. If they knew that, well, that you have an internal goal of recovering, say, 40, 50, or 60 percent of service costs from actual users, well, then every time you affect something in your expense category, that would have a direct connection with what you have to raise. And you all know in your private life, you can ask for lots of things from the market, but if the market says you're not worth that, you don't get it. <clears throat> so I think this, I know that today you're not prepared to discuss all that. I suggest when you get to this item, instead of a three-year deal, you adopt something much narrower, four months, six months, and that you then schedule in some future time a work session to discuss basically <clears throat> why TriMet is stuck to this tar baby uh, of a streetcar, of how long are you going to be part of it? Uh, what, what is a fare box? What is an appropriate fare box recovery ratio for all of your service? And if you don't have one, maybe you you know should have one. And really, it's a, it's a chance to, at a policy level, and you're a policy board, talk about these things so that these numbers begin to take on more sense. Because without a broader context, they're just numbers, and you vote yes. And I suggest that you not vote yes for three years. You vote yes if you're going to vote yes for a much shorter period and revisit this in a thoughtful way sometime soon.